Okay. Okay, we're back. Right, got the face plate on. Now, I know it's not 100% centre, I'm not right back on centre because I wanted to get the screws into the wood on here. I don't know what they go like on resin, holding the resin, but I'm not going to take the chance. Now I've got two inch screws in there, so it's all held on safe. I'm going to now get that mounted on. Right, just going to get it just there, just loose, and I'm going to bring that tail stock up. So that, if I tighten that up a little bit, that can hold it, so I know everything's going to be where it needs to be. And I'm going to hold that nice and tight. I say it's quite a heavy piece. This I wouldn't want that to hit me. Right now you can see that's slightly off, so I'm going to tail stock in. See how much I'm off by. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too. We're straightening that up. Right. Okay. We get. Do you want to make sure the focus is uh, as you need it? Yeah, I'll move you out a little bit, and we can, so you can see what's what's going on here. Okay, I'm gonna leave you about there. Hopefully, that's in focus. There, you should be all right with that. Hopefully, you're gonna see everything. So it's new to me all this filming business. I normally just worry about me turning. Not whether people can see me turning. Right, okay, I'm going to turn the lathe on. I've got it turned down a bit. Yeah, that's not too bad. Right, I'm going to turn it up. I want a bit more speed than that. Right, I'm getting a bit of wobble now on my lathe. I'm going to go through that, see if I can go through it. If it gets worse, I'll turn it back down. No, there you go, it's smoothed out. Right, I'm at 1200 on that, bit bumpy. I'm going to use the... Knock the light off and on. I'm going to be using the 12mm round for this, and we'll see how we go. I want to get this side in balance now, so I'm going to start off I'm not just going to go in flat, I'm going to start off by rolling the tool over. Feel what I'm getting. Feels quite nice. I know what I'm going to be getting, I'm going to be getting a lot of mess. I'm not using my chisel flat at the moment, I'm keeping it rolled over. That's where I'm slightly out of balance. My trouble is this is just way too slow for me turning. I'll turn it up a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm not start. I'm not turning on 1300. There we go. We're on 14.
Okay, ne? Ne? Obviously resin, you gotta be a bit gotta be a bit gentler with resin, I'm not gonna take too big of cuts on it. I don't want I don't want chunks chipping out of it. See now, what you got, also, see, let's stop that for a second, just have a look, look at this, now, as you can see, I hope you can see, I'm, I'm not getting any, any chunks coming out, I'm not chipping it at all, now the reason I'm not chipping it is because I'm not going in flat, I'm not using this as a scraper, I'm using it to cut the resin, now, when you uh, get yourself untangled now you've got a danger point though with doing this and your danger point is being that when when you come down I'm fine I've got my tool slightly handle slightly lowered I'm not doing the, the what everyone would tell you put your tool there have your tool rest back further come in flat and you just scrape it and this will be chipped chipped then you'll have chunks coming out of it and everything now drop your handle a little bit you've got a bevel on this right there look it don't cut don't do nothing come down a little bit now I'm gonna get a cut and that's actually cutting that that's not scraping it believe me that's cutting right now you move along now you've got a danger point because when you come to the bottom of your bowl if you come around the corner in this position you've now got your cutter on this side facing upwards that's going to get in and that's that's going that's not going to cut there that's going to look you can feel you see what's happening it's going to catch it's going to try and scoop your back it's going to cause you problems so you've got to lower it as you get to the end of your cut you've got to lower that back down that little bit to come round now when you're doing that you're going to have to come round from this way with the cutter up because then this has got no chance of coming into contact with the edge. You must try to be cutting on the centre of your cutter. Coming down here, you're fine. If you get to it, if you try and go around that corner, it's going to grab on you. 100%, no foul, it will do it every single time. It's going to grab on you and it's going to pull your chisel down. And what it's going to do, it's going to chunk, look, you can see already, it's going to chunk that out. Okay? So we're, we're only doing the straight cut straight off the edge. And I'm near enough there, I don't want to go too much. I don't want to reduce the diameter too much. I've got a little bit of wood showing on these. I'm going to go a little bit more because I've got wood here and I've got none here. So I've got to get it roughly to the same. It's still not 100% not yet. So let's keep going. So don't go round the corner, just go straight off. Don't go round. If you've got to go round, you've got to flatten your tool back over. If you don't want, to, don't want to do that at the moment, just leave it. This is just a standard cutter. I'm going to be trying out. I'm going to be using the uh, the negative rates a bit later. Well, so I've got them on my website, and they are they are brilliant cutters. I've tried them on wood, and they work really well on the wood. I haven't tried a lot of stuff. I don't turn with, you know, I haven't tried them on that. Now I can hear now that I'm cutting wood. I'm going to go straight off that end, and here I'm cutting wood, and I'm, I'm pretty much balanced. So I'm going to take another cut.
And like I say, you've got to be careful when you get on this corner, because you're in danger of that being up. You've got to come off with the front. If you catch that side, it's going to kick you over. It ain't going to be very nice. Right, I've got wood show. I think I'm going to have to take it down a bit more because it was slightly off. I'm not getting enough wood on all. I want more wood on here, really. Although, actually, no, because some of those bits are set back further in. So, we'll go with that. We'll see how we get on. So now, to get this bottom, I'm going to bring my tool rest in. In as close as I can always, always as close as I can be. Alright, start that up, now I want to come, I just want to take some of this corner off. Now you can see how I can come round I can come round that corner because I'm staying on the tip of the cutter all the time see on this, this side's not going to come in contact so I'm on the tip of the cutter but I'm I'm staying with my tool twisted, I'm not flat. I very rarely use my carbide chisel flat, especially the round one. I'm just going to nibble away at this. I want to. A bit of a rounded bottom on there. Well, oh, look at this. Oh, that's stupid. That's quite Christmassy, though, isn't it? I have to turn these at Christmas. I can then use all that indoors. <laughs> Decorate the tree. See now, that was wood. That would just be falling on the floor. But I tell you what. That's pretty warm as well. See the little catch there? Let's see where we are. Little cat, because I was a bit flatter on the chisel. Well, there, that's alright. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's going to be a mess, isn't it? Look at that, that's not too bad. Quite happy with that. I want to come round. I might have to take this in a bit more and reduce the size, because I think I want the wood up the side. But, we'll keep going. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take the towel stuck away. So I can actually work round here. I'm going to take that, I'm going to take that out because I don't want that in my elbow. I'll say I've done it before. And it's not very nice. Right, okay. Keep going. See what we do. A little bit, you can see how that's bumping, can't you? So I'll get that flat. No, we're getting it flat.
I'm actually going to take my, uh, it's going to be awkward to take my towel stuff off, I've got the camera there. I'll leave it for a minute, I'll suffer. I'll have to turn the camera off in a bit and just move it so I can come off the bottom of me. So I really want to be round there. Right, now we're getting smoother. Now as you can see, I've got no, virtually no gap there with my tool rest. I'm keeping it as close as I can all the time. I know they say you have to move your tool rest for a lot of tools, you do, but I make mine so that you can actually keep your tool rest right up close. Give you maximum support, that chisel can't go nowhere. No strain on me. Now if I come across this bottom, like this, now if I, when I look at this bottom afterwards, if I've got all chips and chunks out of it, then I'm doing something seriously wrong. And you've got to look at the way you're cutting. Now I'm coming from here, so I'm going to try and leave this bit because I want to put my glue block on there. Tell you what, this resin stuff, it takes a long time to turn, doesn't it? It's not as quick as wood. You're probably going to get bored watching me do this. But, they'll be done in sections, so you can always skip a video on. getting there. I don't know what shape I'm actually going for, I'm just doing this as I'm going. There's no plans here. I'm going to let the bowl tell me what it wants to be. Chisel's getting hot as well. Right, I'm going to turn my speed up a little bit. I'm all in balance. Yeah, I'm up at 1600, over 1600 now. Oh, that's better.
Pa se vede te, ko je sa bom buta, ne? Come up, come up on this front now, on this side, I'll start shaping around a bit more, a bit more off the side. I've got wood and plastic coming off now. Stop that for a minute and have a look and see what we got. Well, I feel I've got a pretty smooth finish there. A few ridges, we're going to take those out in a minute. Got a little hole in that bit of wood there. That's all right, I've got a bit of wood showing all round, so that should, should look nice when it gets polished up. Right, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to have a little go with the uh, the negative rate cutters, and see, look at this, look at this, look, look, look at all this. My dicks, don't get out with wood. Don't know why you guys like turning with all this resin stuff. It's going to take Lisa ages to clean up my workshop. <laughs> Go back to wood, yeah. <laughs> Right, now. I'm use, uh, this is actually, I wouldn't use these for a, a bowl, certainly for the outside I would, but not for the inside at all, right, now these are my, this is my pen set, I'm going to use the negative rake ones, so I'm going to have a little go on the round one, but I'm, I'm going to do the actual shaping with the, with the squares, see actually the R2, so that's going to be a bit, bit better I think. We've got about four minutes left on this. Right, okay, four minutes will be good enough. Right, let's get that going. Right, now this is a negative rake. Now these, yeah, you can come in flat on them. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're designed to make it better when you come in flat, see? That, I must admit, that's, that's actually really, uh, I mean, look, you can see yourself, the cut that's come from that. But I will still be, I'll still be inclined I'm gonna roll over. It don't feel right to me without rolling over. There is just no effort with that whatsoever. That's cutting lovely. I just go. I want to get. I don't want to take too much off of that, so I want to come in with the R2 cutter. Now this should give me a cleaner finish. Now I'll probably cock this up now, but see now with the R2. Get rid of that. Because you've got that slight, very slight radius, it's only slight, because if you have any more, then you might as well have a round. Just get those corners out of the way. When you put that up against something flat, like there, 
as you can see, well you probably can't see, but there is a slight gap there between those, get those points out of the way. That means if I come in nice and gentle on the straight, we go back and forwards like that. have a look at that so I think that's cleaned those tool marks up lovely yeah that's done really well that, that, that's a little bit there but that's going to sand up quite nice that. that's really smooth no chipping no, not one bit of chipping on that not one bit of resin's chipped out now I know people say oh you're scraping it's a scraper everyone I see turn a bowl will do their best bowl gouges and they're very good with them very experienced turners and normally come in with a scraper to clean up at the end they're negative rate scrapers. Normally something, something a bit like this. And they come in and they they clean their bowls up with it. Nothing wrong with it. You use whatever tool you have to use to achieve the job. How you do it is how you do it. Right, so let's try and get that line out of there, just there. There we go. Rest that's going to come out fine when I do a bit of sanding. I'm just going to move around to the side. That's why you shouldn't have it running when you turn, leave the tool rest, see? So I just caught it. What an idiot. But I've done that deliberate to show you why you should stop your lathe. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, as long as you put it right. It's not the mistakes we make, it's the, it's the fact that we correct them. But that was just a demonstration as to why you turn your lathe off before you move your tool rest. Could have ruined your favourite piece. If I had just finished that, finishing that piece off, I would have been well gutted. Seconds, yeah. Right, we're going to run out of video, so this will be another video now. Join me on the next one.